54 countries, over 1.2 billion people. More than 25 million Africans are currently infected with AIDS. More than 25 million have already died from AIDS. 1 million people are infected each year. More than 15 million children have lost their parents due to AIDS. But there is a quiet revolution going on in Sub-Saharan Africa. In about 20 countries, thousands of people have been successfully treated for AIDS for about one dollar each per year, while millions have received malaria prevention at a cost of just 10 cents per person per year. Everybody must die, but my time okay. is not now. ARHF is a European foundation that is active in Africa and claims to have a new way of improving health and well-being in HIV AIDS patients that not only cost little money, but also is free of side effects and causes no therapy resistance. I was positive. Even right now I'm using drugs and I'm using PC. I'm okay. And that's not all. Every minute a child dies of malaria and then there is this incredible claim that ARHF can help in preventing malaria for just 10 cents per child per year. In wet areas, up to 30% of school children can be absent from class due to malaria. After implementing the African Malaria Prevention Project, this is brought back to almost zero in just a few weeks. After one month, we started realizing that they were now not asking for permission to go to the hospitals. They are doing well, that's why we are having a large number of malaria-free kids. Can all this be true? Can this new approach to HIV AIDS and malaria prevention be safe, simple and effective for hardly any cost at all? My journey began when I started to realize that we are dealing here with a significant turning point in the development of medicine in Africa and maybe in the whole world. This is the way I felt during my first meeting with Harry a few years before this trip to Kenya. I decided to travel to Africa to see with my own eyes what it is all about. Does it really work? And if so, to understand how it works. How is it possible that even though they have existed for 20 years, so few people have heard of these remedies? What I realized when I was like, say, uh, in my early 20s, is that uh, we as human beings can live a very different life and that, that we are hardly um, living our full potential and not in full potential in terms of like accomplishments or whatever, but like just being a, a happy uh, being. And um, so I was searching for that for myself and, and realized that that was the main goal in my life. Um, to find inner happiness, in, inner peace. And at the same time, I felt like, but that's what I would want for everyone. Like Harry, I too would like that for everyone else. So I joined the ARHF team in Kenya with the mission of researching how they succeed in improving so many people's lives. The hostess welcomes us with a prayer ceremony, which is not arranged especially for us, but symbolizes participation in gratitude to creation and to us for being a part of a world that naturally connects us one to another. Welcome. In countless places in the world, individualism and separation rule, distancing people from each other, 
The fact that many Africans live in more tightly knit societies creates a human tapestry that plays an important role in the success of the resonances. These are homeopathic energetic remedies named PCs or source resonances. It all started with Peter Chappell, an electronic engineer, inventor and expert homeopath. The combination of all these abilities, plus an open mind and character, brought him to find a way to create the source remedies. The first question I asked was, what does he mean by source? Well, source is that which is the creative force of the universe. It's something that in the past we've called God, but because God has got overloaded with many religious connotations, it's more like the presence that is here right now in this moment. It is the unifying force of life, in a way unknowable, but it is the actual essence of what each one of us are. So that's what I mean by the source. So now the obvious question is how are the source remedies made? When I was in Ethiopia, essentially, I made a request to source. I wanted the remedy that matched the totality of this disease in this bottle. And I had a bottle with water and alcohol in it. And I said, in this bottle, I want the remedy for HIV AIDS. And then I gave it to people. I got fantastic <laughs> results with this bottle. And these results, people would come back to me and say, I am better. It was that simple. And that meant that their symptoms had gone away, their weight had come back on, their appetite had returned, their energy had returned, and everything had gone back to normal. And those results have persisted now for two decades. Slowly, slowly, while watching hundreds of people sitting the entire day in heavy heat, awaiting their turn, the picture started to crystallize. What Peter was talking about is actually happening and will maybe even enable the impossible. When Ama for Africa came to Kenya, because they have some of the good remedies, we were called in that training and I went there and they share their views with us. I saw it to be a good thing for our community because our community was suffering from different challenges, diseases, HIV and AIDS, typhoid, TB, malaria was the worst one. Uh, Mr. France, we are testing for malaria. If it is there or it is not there. She has malaria. During outreaches, the team treats malaria, AIDS, various forms of trauma and other conditions. Joshua is working at the county's governmental hospital. He joins the ARHF team once or twice a week to help his patients with PC remedies. Since I started working with the, 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 the project, this arm, I think uh, there is tremendous uh, changes, uh, uh, improvement of the patients, uh, more so uh, at the community level because uh, you know, for the example, like uh, uh, the patients that are, are, are PCAF, PCA1, that are HIV positive, uh, in, in, in fact, uh, uh, it's a lot of improvement in their life uh, when it comes to, to, to taking this drug. I have uh, patients from uh, my hospital. Yeah. They are here, majority of them are here yeah. because uh, some of them, uh, those, uh, the diseases that uh, they, they are suffering from, they recur. You, you give them the treatment, it, uh, again, it, 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 comes, it again. comes again. So uh, since uh, I started introducing them into this uh, treatment, they are doing better and they have a lot of improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the sub-county, I'm being paid by the county government, but here I just volunteer to help the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you talk like giving a remedy for, to an HIV AIDS patient, if there is a, a test that is positive, you can just give the remedy. There's nothing else you need to know. It doesn't interfere with ARVs, antiretroviral drugs. Um, it never gives side effects and all of that. So it's very safe to do that. Malaria prevention, the same. First of all, 
because the remedies simply contain water that has been imprinted with healing information, but no other physical substances, I search for answers to the question of whether water can keep or contain healing information. When we just forget about classical physics and we use quantum physics, when we take this very powerful theory and we ask, does water can hold information? The answer is yes. There is a scientific mechanism by which water is able to behave as a hard disk, storing information. The beautiful experiment, which was done by Luc Montagnier, which was a Nobel Prize in medicine, he has shown that you, when you put DNA into water, water is able to memorize um, an electromagnetic copy of the DNA. And with this purely electromagnetic copy, which is not material, there is no more DNA, you can reconstruct the whole DNA exactly the same as the DNA you have used to make this, its spectrum into water. So this is a, an experimental proof. The idea that energy, or maybe information, can be stored and imprinted in water and can cure or treat diseases sounds both incredible and promising, but is still strange to my logical brain. So on that day, it was weak, every place it was, was perfect. perfect. Yeah. Even the air was yeah. brown, <laughs> it was moody, it don't have... You could not even laugh. Mm. He was very much weak, and uh, she, she was not talking to people because he has uh, got a lot of stigma. Yeah, he was he very was harsh. Thin and very harsh <laughs> even to the children. But after giving her the remedy, I was checking her. So she started to be good, 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 good. till yeah. her life was good. Um, right now I'm good. Yes. I'm okay. You can't argue with the improvement all these goodnesses points to. But I was wondering how the remedy boosts the immune system and how it affects the human body. We have an immune system that if you are really honest, nobody knows how it works. We know it's important, but we have no detailed mechanism. But yet there is one thing that we know. It's that the immune system deals with information. And this is the reason why it is a very good idea not to use matter for healing, but information. We, we put our immune system on the right track. After I started the PC1M, immediately, uh, I say, this is Jesus. I'm confident. I'm walking with confidence. I'm doing my things with confidence. I'm happy. I take that opportunity to be open, to be free. As I saw the sensitive way of thinking of ARHF in Africa, I understood that the use of the source medicine must be in the hands of the Africans themselves. That's how it works in Kenya, with many dedicated volunteers who give so much of themselves to help and take care of the community they live in. Every volunteer has his reasons for devoting himself to the community by means of the remedies. It is a calling, they all say. I'm sad as I'm hey. You know, me as a Christian, I do not want anybody to suffer, and maybe I have something in which I can help. I feel if I can, when not giving it to those who are suffering from different diseases, then I don't know. I think, I think God can not uh, forgive me. That is why I'm doing this free and comfortably. God has provided something for me because I, my children are going to school and I, I actually praise God for what you have done for us. Hey, buddy. My name is Malaria. My name is Malaria. Mami mar malaria. Abru ni ni mar injai. One, two, three, four, five. 
Now I want to give him PC malaria to carry home. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you. So, very happy with this first Amofrefer conference in Africa itself, on African soil. The work is done here. And so, gradually by gradually, I think the whole project moves to Africa more and more. And the more sustainable and, and independent you are as an organization, the more easy it will be to grow and to expand and, and be successful. Fifteen delegates from different countries in Africa have gathered to share studies and experiences with the PC resonances. For some of them, this is the first time they have been abroad. This was a unique opportunity to share, wonder, question, learn from one another, and understand the common accomplishments and hardships. I heard many stories about successes and challenges in their work. So even we have men who are on PC1, they have refused to take the ARVs, but they have to hide because the government wants the community health workers to remove them to the facility because we test them and then we give the ARVs. But some have refused, but we are seeing the PC1 is working. Well, we, we always want to, to remain within the law. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So on a local level, we find the kind of authorization that we can get to be able to do this. Huh? And that, that differs per country what is possible and what is the best way to do it and how to implement it and all of that. Despite restricting laws and regulations in diverse countries in Africa, those who have been aided by their treatment will not give it up. But from my point of view, the reason why those remedies are not used by the health authorities on a national level is still not clear to me. We try to find uh, ministries of health, um, research institutes, um, in universities Africa. in Africa. Yeah. We went to several African countries and tried to kind of pull something off. Um, and for one or the other reason, there was always something that kind of didn't make it happen. And uh, at some point we, we thought, okay, why is, this, why is this happening? Why are we kind of running into a wall? And are we willing to listen to this, you know, and understand that perhaps there's a message in this? It's not possible to quickly inject something which is revolutionary, transformative and effective because they're going to be, uh, in, it's going to be complete skepticism, etc. But if you've got a closed and skeptical mind, as, as the nature of a scientific approach to things, it's very hard to get um, um, testing done and objective testing and that sort of thing. So, um, and that, that is the way, that is the barrier, if you like, to this sort of medicine being allowed in the world. Whereas at the same time, we were experiencing that whenever we were somewhere at a rural, rural area where healthcare is normally very poor, uh, patients, clinicians were very happy to kind of adopt this, be trained, uh, we supplied them, and many people were benefiting from that. And we re realized that is what we want. We want people to benefit. I was positive. Even right now I'm using drugs and I'm using PC. It took 10 years after the death of my husband in 1997. So I went there after 10 years. It's mm. when I just decided to go and check myself, and I was found positive. So I just decided, no, life has to continue. The other one went. My husband went. I have children. I have to look after the children. But PC1F, I don't leave behind.
I decided to volunteer and treat people with PC. Everybody here, and mostly they're all HIV positive. And I always give them the PC remedy mm-hmm. for HIV AIDS. Mm-hmm. And they're doing well. No side effect. Strong, appetite high. I'm okay. Working in the clinic, working in the chamber, even here I used to plow with myself with my hands, working in the chamber for the rice, mm-hmm. doing any duty which is available. Mm-hmm. I don't feel anything bad. I don't feel tired. Mm-hmm. I feel okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> During the last year, a study about the influence of PC1 on AIDS patients has been going on. The study included 300 patients and was conducted by Kenyan doctors with support of the AMA for Africa team. Especially the, the clients who are on PC1 only, is that previously, before they were put on PC1, they were not using anything and they were frequenting the clinic for these other diseases like respiratory tract infections, pneumonia, diarrhea. But once we studied them on the remedy, actually the immunity strengthened and they know more, they don't come regularly for those other ailments. They're doing good. Yeah. After how much time would you see a change like that? The PC1? Yeah. Two months, two, three months. Within two, three months, you yeah. see them no longer coming back. Yeah. We're doing this work in Africa for now almost 20 years. And uh, if you go to Africa and you see the results, uh, that is so rewarding. Um, but we also want to share this with others. PC1 study in Africa that we were able to do, including 300 patients, was a beautiful opportunity to really objectify what this treatment is doing on a clinical level also, not only in the experience of the patients, but also objectified clinically. We had three groups, each of 100 people, either on PC1, either on ARVs, or a combination of both. And we would check their CD4 count, which is a sign of their immunity. We would check their viral load, how active HIV is in their bodies. We would check their weight. People lose a lot of weight with with HIV AIDS. We would check their energy, their appetite, and their strength. And what was very beautiful to see is that the PC1 only group outperformed the two other groups on all parameters, statistically significant. This model came up with a very clear message, and the message is that the group that was given PC1 remedies only was doing best, which is quite amazing because the people who were given the PC or or were taken PC1 remedy only were actually at least as ill initially as the other groups. So we see a very clear effect of that PC1 remedy compared with all other interventions, which is, um, in my view, a very clear and a very valid indicator that there is something going on. The data we collect is very convincing, so there's no doubt about that. Most people don't want to be convinced anyway. So, but when we have a serious partner here in Africa, then we have something to show. So also that we want to use in a, in a bottom-up approach and we will use it for those people that by sponsoring us uh, um, and that are interested in this kind of work, we have something to show to them. Perhaps it is not a coincidence that we are now in a place called Ahero. And for those that don't speak Luo, Ahero means love. So somehow HIV AIDS is an epidemic is a teacher of love, you could say. And it took love from all of you to accept to do this kind of work for the small stipend that we were able to provide. It takes love of all the volunteers in this region that reach out to all these communities to bring healing to the people. So I started to say, 
that today my name is gratitude, but I would also want to add it is also love. Love to all of you. Thank you so much for who you are, for what you do, and for having us here as a team from Europe. Your hospitality, your love, your taking care of us is really appreciated deeply in the heart, and we are connected to you forever. The shifting between the spiritual way of thinking and the scientific explanations is most necessary for getting some answers to my questions and understanding how these remedies are working. I don't want to give explanation about a telepathy or some very strange waves which can be emitted. No, no, no. We will keep with physics, that is to say, things that we know already, which is exist. The basic point is that you are, any living being is an electromagnetic emitter. A human being has what is called a metabolism. And this metabolism has a consequence that you have in your body what is called channels in membranes. And these channels in membranes are permanently closed and opened, closed, open. And when the channel is open, you have a flow of electricity with, across the membrane. That is to say, you are made of matter and electricity. The most powerful emitter is the heart. So, as soon as you have a, a change in your metabolism, internal metabolism, you will change modulate the electromagnetic radiation of the heart. And this electromagnetic radiation will be sent out in space. And if you have somebody which is in front of you, you will receive this electromagnetic information and this will change his metabolism internal. In the same way, if you have just give to these people, you have give uh, an informed water. Here in Africa, what matters most is that those whose well-being benefits from the source resonances are less concerned with scientific and philosophical questions, but instead experience the effect of them directly. We drove to the village where Monica lives with her husband. She had not seen him for several weeks. <laughs> People living with HIV and AIDS, I was taught how to identify them in the community and I gave them the PC remedies. After the death of his husband, mm -hmm and she was suffering from the disease, and we give her PC-1. Mm -hmm. And after the use of that PC-1 for a short time, she has seen a lot of changes. Nowadays, she's okay, she's doing her work normally, and she thought she could die because of the disease. But she got an hope from PC-1, and she's just okay, healthy, and doing her work. Do you mind uh, do the farming together with your husband? Yes, we do talk together. <laughs> uh, sometimes we read with him. I'm growing peanut groundnuts also, maize and some crops like beans. So I decided to look for somewhere where I can sell. So that's why I decided to have two houses. If she volunteer to help the people, it is good because you cannot you cannot block somebody to do his work. I said I said I'm free to help people. Being I'm a volunteer helping different people, it is my happiness that those who are in trouble they can come up and say thanks. 
for what you have done for us. So my future is benefiting in our people, how they are doing. I'm kicking malaria off from the kids. He still has some malaria, this one, because he's not doing any exercise. The natural and direct connection of the African team with children and their parents is so simple and human, enabling the same trust and openness to the universe and to the source from which the healing resonances emanate. The multitude of severe illnesses, poverty and harsh conditions in this area of the world do not inhibit the spirit of the community. Joy, friendship and sharing the same faith unite people, causing them to trust and rely on one another. Much more than in the West, here people are really part of a community. When you talk about their patients, their, their, their uncles and aunties and children and nephews and all of that, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, there's not that distance between uh, our highly individualized community. Nice to meet you, Nora. Yeah, thank you for hosting us here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you also for coming. Whereas taking the remedy correctly is one of the main things. Giving the right remedy is one thing, taking it correctly is the second mm. thing. Mm. So I would like someone to take responsibility yes. for that, to make sure mm. that everyone who leaves this place knows how to take this remedy. <laughs> bang, bang, bang on the table to disperse the information evenly in the water bottle. Seda explains how to take the remedy in the right way. Because of the PC, I'm alive. I've used it for seven years now. If it were that this drug was not there, I could not be alive by now. You are going to get support from these drugs. So be free and tell us what is happening to you. So tell me. This is the only son that mm. used the PC injury when we ah, start. Mm -hmm. He's alive. I'm here. That's this you? Day we are there. there are only two boys mm -hmm. and these girls. That one is the third boy. I had two, three children. Mm. One died mm. and I'm remaining with two. What did he die of? Died of malaria. Yeah. Just severe malaria at once. Yeah. <gasps> We didn't how, know. How old was he? She was uh, eight years. Eight. Mm. Yeah. In Africa, they have boarding schools. In one school, there were 600 children, I think, and they reckoned that about 130 on a good day had malaria. We started treating them for malaria, and then they said, well, why can't we just treat all the children? And so we instigated a program then treating all the children, say, once a week with a dose of the malaria remedy. and then they, after a year, they didn't have any malaria in the school. And not only that, when they stopped the treatment program, they still didn't get any malaria. That's when we realized, ah, oh, this, this, you know, in theory, it should work as a prophylactic, but here's the evidence. On the way to a school that has not yet heard of the PC remedies and the project of preventing malaria, the morning started with an explanation to the teachers, who looked quite sleepy at the beginning of the talk, then slowly, their eyes lit up with a spark of excitement that there might be a promising new remedy for them. We had this beautiful remedy that we call PC malaria, and we used it just to treat malaria very successfully. We make this remedy available to be given to the children on a regular basis to prevent them from falling ill from malaria, to prevent them from being absent from school from malaria, to prevent them to die from malaria. And for that, the body needs information, not a chemical, chemical substance that can have side effects, but just information. And just like when you read something in a newspaper huh, and you share that with someone else, you still have the same amount of information. It's not like half of it has been given away. You still have the same amount. You can share it with the whole country and still you have the same. 
With these remedies, it's the same. This means that with one granule, and we already prepared this for your school, we make what we call a master bottle. And then the information is being spread all through the bottle. The granule has been dissolved, and the information is in every, each and every drop of this. You squeeze this one, and all you do is you put five drops in here. So we start with the bang. If you do six, no problem. <laughs> but not necessary either. Yeah. Huh? But you have failed on mathematics. Huh? <laughs> Keep in the mouth. Five minutes. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. 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 On that morning, in a school that has just become familiar with PC malaria, I was wondering about men's ability to trust. Is it connected to being in touch with one's intuition, or maybe a basic act of survival? No matter where it comes from, by accepting the possibility or openness to the unknown, the chance for a change appears. And see how much is left. You can easily do the whole score. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Yeah. The remedies we make available for free, um, thanks to some donations that we get. Um, malaria prevention, you give many out of the same bottle. So malaria prevention at a school is 10 cents per child per year, which is uh, nothing. nothing. The idea of addressing malaria in schools is spread also to the children and their families in the surrounding communities. Here is another original way of Collins, Monica's son, to spread the word. Mm -hmm. How is your work of skating connected to the project that your mom is doing for AMA for Africa. Okay, this activity actually, uh, for the first thing I can say, it uh, attracts it attracts a number of um, children, and a number of children around here are from different primary schools and different places. So, as a, an attraction of skating, they come together, and then as long as they are together, we gather them together, teach them more about uh, the 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 AMA for Africa organization where we have healing medicines. So this is the actual moment we get uh, to talk to them, to share to their parents. And then some parents, most of parents, come and ask more about what are the AMA Africans doing. When we were beginning, I began at five children, but now I'm above 110 children. And they are doing well, that's why we are having a large number of malaria-free kids around. It was almost the last day of school before vacation. The pupils proudly wore their graduation uniforms. I was amazed to hear what progress the pupils in this school have achieved during the year due to the malaria prevention program, of which they are part. Uh, before the introduction of this prevention, we experienced a lot of absenteeism from class one, from ECD to standard eight but immediately introduced this mal uh, malaria prevention, the cases of uh, absenteeism, uh, they went slowly by slowly disappearing. 
after taking this uh, drug. Mm -hmm. And uh, up to now I'm talking, we don't experience a lot of it, uh, absenteeism in class. And this one has also helped the pupils to concentrate on the academics. And even if right now, when you check the, the exam of this term, and even the previous years, we have been doing extremely good because of this prevention of malaria, because people are coming to school normal time and they are going back without any problem. An even more incredible idea came to Peter's mind. That is to receive the same resonance treatment by sound, meaning that the same information embedded in water is embedded in sound that is audible. He included resonances to other common conditions needing treatment in school. I decided to make a sound to treat all the common epidemic diseases of Africa, like and malaria being number one. And then I made another sound to treat all the traumas of Africa. And I compressed them into a one minute long sound. And then I compressed into the third sound something that could be called um, enhancing academic abilities. I call it LEAP and it's become a standard, bulk standard program that we give to schools in Africa. <laughs> when it comes for the LEAP, it, is, it has also boosted so much. They could come to my office and ask me, Mr. Tembo, can you go and play for us? Because we have a lot of stress. Mm. I, can, I put them under the tree, I play the, 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 the music for them, mm. they listen, and then after some, after two to three hours, the pupils come, they come just back to normal. Oh. And, and, and then when you go back to class, they are really concentrating. And even last year, we were number two in the KCP in the whole Republic of Kenya. The whole Republic of Kenya? Yes, yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's an exception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And you attribute that to the LEAP program? Yeah, to the LEAP program. Yeah. And again, the question is how is it possible to insert the healing information into sound? But this music, the sound, is not the thing that you're listening to. It's only, it's only the carrier. It's not the content. Now, the content is made by a different process. We use in homeopathy. We use intention. So what we do is we embed into sound Instead of taking a little white pill, we make a sound, like we use violin or jazz or piano. Now, the results for LEAP was, I think, a 26% increase year on year on educational achievement. And they all stopped using the cane without us suggesting it so that the violence went out of it. So, you know, these things are hard to argue about. Since it was given, there are a lot of changes that we've seen, especially on performance. Pupils are able now to perform better compared to the previous years. Another thing that I've seen on LIP is that the pupils who are not interacting with their friends socially, they can now interact better in a socially conducive environment. They're able now to be creative they can draw, they can do things together, cooperate with their friends, something that they used not to do. So the basic idea with healing with music is very simple. In fact. You take the electromagnetic frequencies and you divide by two, and by two, by two, by two, that is to say you use octaves and when you divide by a sufficient amount of two, you will have frequencies which are audible by the ear. And the idea is that it is the same information. That is to say, you have decreased the frequency, but the meaning of the information which is carried by this frequency is the same. <laughs> A long ride on a dirt road took us to another school that serves as an assembly venue for outreach gatherings. 
The fact that hundreds of thousands of people in Africa have already been supported with PC remedies for malaria prevention and other conditions like HIV AIDS or different forms of trauma works like a social net and brings in more and more patients to receive them. As the journey in Kenya went on, I saw more and more people who testify that they were at the door of death and yet got their lives back, or less dramatically, went back to functioning as parents caring for their children and being able to earn a living. They ascribe their being still alive to the PC resonances. You are here as the head teacher, as the head teacher of yes. the school, but you also fulfill a role in the region, no? Yeah. I also double to be a leader of teachers. Mm -hmm. I am their chairman in the whole branch. When somebody is sick, they go to the health teacher, they are given, mm. they lie under a tree, and then they just get well. After how long they do, do they get well? One hour. We give them, we always tell them, at times they want to get up after, between 30 minutes, but we tell them, just relax, uh -huh. and then, yeah. And then after an hour they can, they back, can go, go back to class. Go back to class, yeah. They're fine. Yes. And and how many times does that happen? That now a child gets ill during the class. This, this time now it is, it is not serious. Even the doctors around here, one of them asked me, nowadays your children are not coming to the hospital. Sa wakati tulikunywa iyo maji, mimi nilikunywa iyo maji nilikuwa apa, nilikuwa mgonjwa wakati wao. Nikakunywa baada ya dakika kumi hivi nilikuwa sawa When the teacher took that drug he was sick in class so when he was given that drug he was it was put here and then after 10 minutes he felt well so he went on with his learning You also have children with epilepsy at the school but epilepsy is in many cases caused by malaria, malaria in the past. Yes. Yeah, as a child, yeah. they had serious yeah, cerebral yeah, malaria, yeah, mm. and then epilepsy can be a result. Oh. And, and that's why I'm wondering whether you've seen any of the epileptic like, like, cases, no, no, like, like, like getting now. less attacks. Than yes, they had it's getting to less. To Even this. my son, Sasa, my son, used to be like that. Mm. The one in Mombasa. If he could forget to take the Tegratol, mm. he would fall like five times. Mm. He falls, he falls, he falls, like any now, day. A, any day, yeah, he just the, falls, yeah, yes. Yeah. And did he have a history of malaria? Yes. But what was the situation with him? The time he had malaria, he had uh, convulsions. Mm. I thought it was the normal convulsions of malaria. Mm. Then he started falling in class eight. Mm. I realized it is epilepsy. Mm. But when I started giving him, one good thing with the drugs, his emotions, you know, he was very harsh. His emotions went down. The anger is gone. And is he still using the Tegretol? No, 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 I left. Mm. <laughs> Watch now. Yeah. The news again, I want you to give me a pity. What did you want to give me a pity? She needs the drug, mm. but she doesn't have 20 bob for water. If she so I've have told her, you. I've told her, yeah. I'm buying for her water. Mm. Let her go and pay the registration, yeah. and she takes the drug. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, you know we, they need we treatment. Never, we they, never refuse. Yeah, they need treatment, mm. yeah. but you know, for them also to know to use it well, mm. at least they give out for water. Mm. Yeah. But the mama is old, yeah. I can give water. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's always so heartwarming to to hear what this does for kids. Huh? Yeah. Uh, so the potential in those mm. children has always been there. Yes. Mm. But malaria was just keeping them down. Down, down yes, down. yes. And now they improve. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Zambe malamu, Zambe malamu, Zambe
the shifting of consciousness, so that's interesting, and that's maybe more available as a pathway for developing what we do. So consciousness is about truth and love, and they don't compute on a sort of scientific level. So it's about unfolding the love within, unfolding the truth, unfolding the divinity, and make, uh, helping get access to what we really are. And the more people do that, the more people are alive doing that, the more change making will happen. <laughs> The more I immersed myself in the making of this film, I realized that we are not only dealing with an efficient treatment, but also with a chance to change the awareness of humanity, access to information from a high source, healing and improving all creation is already here. The remedies that we work with, they don't come from some kind of company that tries to make money, um, they are not made from substance. They c come from the source of life itself, meaning that they are very pure. These are very pure remedies. And this purity should reflect in us as well. So just like water that is pure, there needs to be some purity in us. Water is also a very nurturing substance that just gives. It just flows. It just flows to where it is needed. And it also flows to the lowest of the lowest. Meaning that within our work, we go to those places where our work is needed most. Also, just like a tree, a tree gives shades to everyone. Our help should go to anyone. We just give. Please, never refuse a human being that doesn't have money in the pocket and cannot afford to buy a bottle of water. Just like a tree has roots, a whole network of roots and a whole network of branches, we are working with a network. And within a network, each and every one is equally important. It's all one tree, and they all play their role. As a foundation, we are coming here, but we like to consider ourselves to be equal to any partner that we work with. But as a human being, there cannot be any difference. We're all equal. We're all from the same creator, and there's no difference there. This was the exact word of Maxwell, which was the father of electromagnetism. What we are doing, it is not us we are doing things. They are done by something which is above us. And this thing which is above us link all the living beings together. Because we are a unity, we should first love ourselves. If I love myself, the world changes. I've kind of dropped this idea of knowing, being the one that knows what should happen or, or how it should happen or whatever. And what I see, and that's it's very beautiful to experience for me, is that the more I kind of are able to let go and just trust, the more it realizes in the most beautiful way. And that any attempt of this little one thinking to, that he knows how to do it, is just in the way of what emerges by itself. In my eyes, this is a story of love, love and faith, about dreams that come true, about destiny, modesty, compassion, and love of mankind. Sapo Mayala Sapo Mayala Sapo Mayala Sapo Mayala